On this week's Honey Badger rant, Rebel Media tells you to sign the a parentheses, 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 petition, and parentheses, and parentheses, and parentheses. Brian, Karen, and myself, Allison, had lots to say. Once again, we tackle accusations of Nazism, racism, and white supremacy. This time, not directed at a bunch of hippies from the Church of Weed, but at the rebel media, as old school media cackles at the Alternative News Network's recent personnel troubles. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Rebel for all the help and coverage it's given the men's rights movement. I hope the Rebel manages to recover from its recent troubles and move on to bigger and better things. Now, if at any time you wish to be brought to the abridged version, a link is in the low bar. And if you want to go to the full stream, the link is above you right about here. Now buckle in and return your tray tables to their upright positions because here's Karen and Brian on how real communazism hasn't been tried yet. Communism sustains itself for a lot longer before it inevitably collapses and everybody is completely miserable and there's usually a higher body count um, than there is with Nazism. I think Nazism is, it's, it's a message that's not wrapped in a fucking bow. Well, I don't know what you're talking right. about, Karen, because we haven't actually tried communism yet. I mean, we're, we're, we're we just we're just not there yet. We just haven't actually done it. it uh, every time we do, every time we get the ball rolling, the right way. No, it yeah. just we just need the right people. Every every time we get the ball rolling, the goddamn capitalists come along and they fuck it all up. And we were though, oh so close God. so many times. Same thing with Nazism, by the way. We haven't actually tried it yet. So, <laughs> I mean, we just we just need to get it right, you know. That that's all it is. We just gotta keep trying. I mean, you know, whatever. Brian on reanimating the corpse of Hitler with vaginal blood. The, the Hitler, newly yeah. animated, reanimated necrotic flesh of Hitler who was dig dug up um, right here in the USA. Apparently, that's where he was buried. And they put his brain inside of a uh, a machine that operates on on white nationalism and the uh, the blood of um, of uh, the 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 vaginal blood of the women who were operated on by that one guy who perfected gyno. Uh, Gynecology, the made advances in gynecology by operating on slave women, took their vaginal blood and then used it to animate the robot. Yeah, that's that's what I heard from the last from CNN. Uh, yeah, from CNN. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, 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 I don't. So I don't it must be true. I don't know no, why they're not they're not taking my dog's vaginal blood right now. So oh oh god, you really have to, oh oh. God. I did. I really had to go there. She's in heat. Now I'm fucking nauseous. Karen on how she doesn't love her stupid child less. Like I was telling Brian, one of my kids has a lower IQ than the other two. That doesn't mean that I think he's inferior or I, you know, want him, you know, to to suffer. You know, Gas I, I the don't child. Think he, I... Myself on how authoritarian fathers are incomplete. White identitarians, this extreme far right, it's generally fairly authoritarian. And the, the idea of the father embodying order is, is something that's sort of part of all of this. The, the, the authoritarian father is actually the mother's subservient father. It's the, it's the father who wants their child to obey a set of rules to keep them constrained and to reduce their individual freedom. And I mean, in some ways you have to because you're, we wanna be part of a society, but in many ways that, that sort of like is, is a situation where the father is an extension of the mother because that, if you think about it, Keeping a child in, in, in a sense of order, obeying rules, making sure they do this, this X, Y, and Z, it's, it's not, not unimportant, but it's still keeping a child within a constrained environment. And the way that I, I approach that is I said, well, there's the mother subservient father who's sort of an extension of this constrained maternal environment that has these, these rules that you have to learn and you just have to abide by them and that is it. And then I called another type of father, the realized father, who instead of teaching um, their, their children to maintain a strict order by battling chaos, which could be, I don't know, the intermingling of the races or the possibility that there's Nazis right around the corner, um, the, the realized father teaches his children to use chaos to fly instead, to fly to their goal instead. And the difference is that if you imagine a hawk on the wind, the hawk doesn't control the wind, and yet the hawk still uses the wind to get where he wants to go. And I think the realized father teaches his children that. 
Brian on how most white people won't just side with other white people in the coming race war. I don't think that all white people would come together to to uh, actually engage in a race war against the other races. Actually, I think that more white people will will tr will actually target other white people that they think are a threat to the races because I think that in many ways um, one of the things that's that is part of a uh, western like white western, you know, culture is that it is open and welcoming to other races. So well, and it, white it, guilt too. Yeah, right? that, that's that's sort of mixed in there, but I think that's that's part of what makes you know uh, Americans Americans. Like it's part of what it's, it is about them, and the ones that tend to identify um, you know more closely with being American than they do with their race tend to be more open to other races and protective of other groups too because you know th they believe in the american dream and these western values and these sort of you know um uh these ideas so i think actually yeah, when, if, if when we, there's a mob if it got down to it if it got down to it uh, I just want to say, if it, when it get down, got down to it, there's actually a pretty good chance that more white people will take up arms other against the white people that want to uh, engage in this race war. So they, they that might they, they actually might be divided in that way. And of course, the other races may be too, but I think to a lesser degree because I think that they have been other races like Hispanics, uh, especially blacks, Hispanics, and like the the ones that tend to do worse. So not like the Asians. They tend to identify more with their race as a defining factor. Even though Hispanic is not a race, they actually mm. identify with it as though it is one. And I think that they tend to uh, they, they tend to be more attached to being Hispanic or being black than they do with being American. And I think that uh, that has a lot to do with you know the media, our education system, our entertainment industry, etc., in the way that they have sort of conditioned them out of being American, not feeling American, not feeling attached to it. And I, I think that if we actually got down to it and we got down to a race war, um, I don't think the whites. There's a chance the whites might not win because they may be up against a lot of their own people for for these sort of progressive values. And finally, I discuss how men's rights is difficult and how some men right run away into a simpler authoritarian narrative, either white nationalism or some version of utopianism. It takes a lot of guts to stick around with this content if you're a man. And if you're a woman, too. Because it is fucking difficult content. It, literally, it is, it is questioning the very foundation of people's identities. It's sort of like being able to just sort of sit in, and, and have, a, have somebody constantly beat your knees with a baseball bat and be like, oh, yeah, I can tolerate this. I'm, I'm okay with this business. Hurts like fuck, but I can do it. Um, or alternatively, you know how like uh, martial artists like pound a, one of those boards to uh, harden up their, their, uh, their bones fists? And, yeah. yeah, their bones or their shins. It's sort of like enduring that and just being okay with it. Because it, it is a constant drum of, of pain, and it's a constant drum of questioning the, bear, the the foundation of your identity as a man or as a woman. Because we identify men in terms of their service, which which by definition means that when they're vulnerable, they are outside of the identity granted to them by society. Very uncomfortable place to be. And women, are, in many ways, are defined by the value of their sex rather than their individuality. So when you start to question the goodness of your sex or the or the or the, like the ineffable goodness of your sex like there there's this, that it's just it's just part of what you are as a woman that you're always right that you're always moral when you start to question that you're questioning the, the identity your identity those are, that's a really like it is hard to un understate how painful it is to question the fundamental aspects of your identity and how tough and how much endurance you have to be able to just continue with it and i can see men who just can't hack it running away to something a little easier. And I'd like to bring your attention to our funding website now. Are you okay with that? Yes, great. Informed consent. Let the show commence. If you enjoy this content, please do consider becoming a supporter. There are a number of delicious beanies we offer our patrons, including access to our Discord, after-show chats for interactive funsies, and other perks www.feedthebadger.com